good morning in this session we are going to discuss the special transformations using the matlab so in this session we will first of all try to see how to describe the body then how to write the matlab code for pure translation pure rotation then translation followed by rotation then its reverse rotation followed by translation and then we'll see what is the effect of a homogeneous transform and finally we will try to figure out what is the difference between the rotation or any transformation about fixed frame of reference versus moving frame of reference so in the last session we have discussed about rotation translation or in general the homogeneous transform on a point which we will further extend to a body so first of all we will try to see how to describe the body so this is we will take the standard universal coordinate system with three mutually perpendicular axes as x y and z so here we will try to describe a body so this is a planar body having points like a which is having coordinates 0 0 0 so then b 3 0 0 c 3 1 0 so we have d e f g h so this is how we define the body so then we can write its coordinates in the matlab using a so here you see that the fourth entry is being used to represent the mapping with respect to the homogeneous transform so all a b c d e f g and h are defined and then we can define the body like the matrix of all these points in a sequence so we'll start with a and end up with a because the last point a will take care of this h to a line in order to close the body so first of all we'll take translation that if we want to translate the body let's say five units in the x direction so this is a matlab code how to represent the body so this is the description of the body this is how we can plot because the first row represents the x coordinate of all the points the second row represents the y coordinate the third row represents the z coordinates and the fourth row represents the mapping with respect to the homogeneous transform so we'll use the plot command and plot all the x coordinates versus y coordinates and this next command is the axis command in order to limit the plot area so the matlab code for translation is we'll use this i as identity matrix so we'll define our homogeneous transform using this identity matrix r1 because it's only translation is being involved let's say there is a frame b which is rigidly attached to the body so as the body translates the frame b and frame a both will remain same as far as the orientation is concerned that's why the rotation matrix will be given by this identity matrix and then p1 will represent the origin of frame b with respect to frame a which is being translated by five units in the x direction and the last row we know for the homogeneous transform is triple zero one so this is how we can show the homogeneous transform as purely translational operator so we will apply this t1 on the body so this is the original body which now we will translate using the transformation matrix so green one is the translated body which has been translated from the original body by five units in the x direction and the coordinates of the new body are a1 b1 c1 which are given by this body one so next comes the pure rotation so this is a matlab code for the rotational function where we have written matlab function as rot which basically contains two input arguments one is the axis about which axis we want to rotate the body and the second one is the amount of angle to be rotated about that particular axis so then we take care of uh, the matlab functions cos d and sin d in order to calculate those angles in degrees so then we'll use if else loop and use the standard rotation template matrix about x axis about y axis and then about z axis so depending upon the axis the if else loop will take care of that particular rotation matrix so then we'll use this function in the code further so here we can see we have used the rot 
z90 which means that we want to rotate the body about the z axis by 90 degrees and p2 has been kept zero because we want pure rotation so p2 is kept as zero because there is no translation involved both the origin of frame a and frame b will remain coincident so this is the final transformation matrix as rotational operator so then we will apply this t2 on the body and we will see its effect this is the original body and when we apply the t2 transformation so this yellow body will rotate like this way keeping this point a as the hinge point and you can see this is the rotation about the z axis by amount 90 degree and these are the new coordinates of body 2 is a2 b2 c2 up to h2 and these are the coordinates of that new body then comes the third case where we have translation followed by rotation so in this case we will use the concept of compound transformations which we have discussed in the last case here t3 we have calculated as pure rotation whereas t1 we have already calculated as pure translation so here you can see on the body first we will apply t1 as the translation and then it will be t3 as the rotation which means that we want to translate the body first followed by its rotation so this is called as compound transformations so let's try to see its effect this is the original body so which will be translated by 5 units towards the x axis and then finally it will be rotated about the z axis and it will become a blue body and the coordinates of this body 3 are as given in this matrix now in the next case let's try to see if we swap the order of uh, these two compound transformations will we get the same final body or is there any change so this is the next case rotation followed by translation so everything remains same over here you can see the order will change so on the original body we will first rotate the body and then translate it so let's try to see its effect so this is the original body yellow in color so first the body will rotate about 90 degrees and then it will translate to 5 units in the x direction so here you can see as compared to the previous case this is a entirely new position and orientation of the body so which means in general the transformations are not commutative so next let's try to see the effect of homogeneous transform which contains the effect of both rotation as well as translation in a single matrix so instead of doing the multiplication by two matrices we can get the same effect using one single matrix known as homogeneous transform so that homogeneous transform can be written like this way t5 where r2 is also non-zero p1 is also non-zero because we want to combine the effect of both rotation and translation and instead of two successive multiplications it's only one single matrix is being multiplied now let's try to see the effect so the effect of this is like this way so which is the second case which means that the homogeneous transform will always involve the rotation followed by translation not the other way around finally let's try to understand the concept of uh, taking a transformation about fixed frame of reference versus moving frame of reference first of all with respect to the fixed frame of reference so this we have already achieved on the original body we have first translated the body followed by rotated the body now let's take a uh, one more translation t6 which is the further rotation about the z axis by 90 degree so this is called as pre multiplication so whenever we want to have any subsequent transformation on the body about the fixed frame of reference we have to pre multiply it so which means we have to multiply it towards the left hand side so let's see its code so again we have this matrix t6 which contains only rotation about the z axis and this is the effect of t6 which is being pre multiplied so now let's see its effect on the body so here we have the original yellow body which is being first translated then it is being rotated so this is the 
blue body which is having the effect of t1 t2 that is translation followed by rotation now we want to further rotate it by 90 degrees so you can see the net effect is the orange body which is the rotation with respect to the fixed frame of reference z axis 90 degrees now let's try to see the other effect so when we do the same thing with respect to the moving frame of reference so in this case we have the original body and we have already performed these two transformations now if we want to rotate the body with respect to the moving frame of reference we have to post multiply by t6 so this is the meaning of post multiplication and this is the corresponding matlab code and let's try to see what is the effect of this post multiplication so this is the original yellow body which is being translated as green body and then it is being rotated so these are the two effects with respect to the fixed frame of reference now we want to have post multiplication which means there is a frame b attached over here which moves along with the body now we want to rotate about the z axis of this frame so it should take this point b as the hinge point and rotate swivel about this so let's see the effect so this is the effect of rotation with respect to the moving frame of reference and this is the final body so in general if we have any body you take this body like uh, transformation i so then any subsequent transformation with respect to the fixed frame of reference we have to pre multiply like t1 t2 let's say we want to then have transformation with respect to the moving frame then post multiply so then further with respect to the fixed frame then pre multiply so this is how or we can keep playing with the transformations with respect to fixed frame of reference and moving frame of reference so thanks to rohit and arnav in the preparation of uh, this ppt thank you